now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's come out to the meeting tonight and also those that will be watching uh, the meeting and the replays on uh, G10 television. Uh, we've got quite a few folks here tonight. And uh, we're going to begin uh, with our Pledge of Allegiance led by uh, Chapter 5, Rolling Thunder, our local chapter here, are, are going to lead us. If y'all would come up, please, and lead us in the pledge. And we will follow that by the invocation by uh, John Carter, our city attorney. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we pause this evening to give you thanks for a beautiful day. We give you thanks for your blessings that you bestow upon us individually and upon us together as the city of Jacksonville. We're so blessed to have such faithful city employees for their dedicated service to our city and its residents. And we especially give thanks that those who were recognized earlier at our longevity ceremony for their five to 30 years of continuous service with the city. We are blessed as a city and we give thanks. We pray for our service members who are serving us here and around the world, for their safety, for their anxious families. And as always, we pray for our mayor and for our council, that your guidance and direction would always be with them. All this we ask in your holy name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> You're right, Mr. Carter. We were blessed with a beautiful day in Jacksonville, North Carolina today. Yes, beautiful autumn day. <clears throat> Council, you have before you a copy of uh, the uh, agenda for tonight's meeting, and I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Mr. Mayor, I would move for the adoption of the agenda with one modification that would be on the consent items to add an item declaring Council's intent to name its voting delegation for the National League of Cities Conference, that voting delegation being Councilman Willingham as the principal delegate and Councilman uh, Washington as the alternate. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. I have some presentations to make, so I'm going to come around front here. Okay, for the first presentation tonight, these are civilian commendation awards. I'd like to ask Chief Mike Inero and Dominique Evans and Jessica Melton from Home to Suites if you would join me up front here, please. Jessica. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining us this evening. On Saturday, August 8, 2015, while working at Home to Suites at 139 Circuit Lane here in Jacksonville, Jessica Melton and Dominique Evans heard noise coming from the pool area of the hotel. <clears throat> Jessica Melton observed a four-year-old child underwater in the pool. She dove into the pool and brought the victim to the surface of the water. Dominique pulled the child out of the pool. Ms. Melton and Ms. Evans initiated life-saving actions, resulting in the child returning to consciousness. Other employees called 911 or 911 and guided first responders to the pool area. The immediate response and life-sustaining efforts by these two uh, ladies resulted in the victim regaining consciousness and being able to continue with life. 
Their re actions resulted in preventing a tragedy and are very worthy of the Civilian Commendation Award. Um, is the child here tonight? Or family? Okay. But I would like to present to you, Chief, if uh, you would present to each student. We have our uh, Civilian Commendation uh, for Jessica Melton and also for Dominique Evans. And thank you, ladies, for your fast thinking and your fast action. Um, somebody owes you a great debt. With our next presentation for tonight, I'm going to let this one, I'm going to invite uh, Paul Levesque if you join me up front here. And I'm going to let you do the presenting here. As the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs has designated the city of Jacksonville as an official regional site for Veterans Day observances for the fifth year in a row. And we appreciate everything that Rolling Thunder does as far as, you know, uh, all, the, all the things you do in this community to, to keep the spirit alive to remember our POWs and MIAs. That's our honor. Uh, I'd like to ask the please, chapter members to please means. come up. They're the ones that come on, make back this up thing here again. Work. They're the ones that actually make this thing work. So absolutely, they deserve absolutely. They deserve the recognition. Definitely, hard-working bunch. Go ahead, Paul. I don't know how long this has been going on uh, as far as we receiving. I think I've, I've lost track of how many years we've received this regional site designation from the Department of Veterans Affairs, but I think it's probably the fifth year that uh, we've been recognized in that regard. And uh, we, the chapter here has been organizing and putting on this Veterans Day parade for 11 years now. This will be our 11th year uh, of the 20 that this parade has been in existence in Onslow County and Jacksonville in particular. And uh, so the, v the Department of the Veterans Affairs looks at sites that observe Veterans Day and uh, we can actually apply to be uh, recognized nationwide as a regional site for the observances of, re of Veterans Day. And this is, uh, I think, is a, a pretty big honor for Jacksonville to be uh, recognized for supporting our veterans and honoring them on Veterans Day. Uh, and I have received the certificate from the Department of Veterans Affairs, and I'll read it. From the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Veterans Day National Committee hereby designates the city of Jacksonville, North Carolina, as a regional site for the observance of Veterans Day 2015. Signed by Robert A. McDonald, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Chairman, Veterans Day National Committee. Mr. Mayor. Absolutely. We also have a, a Veterans Day, official Veterans Day poster for the, uh, from the VA as well to present to the city and maybe you can find a, a prominent place we to. We uh, will. We absolutely, uh, absolutely. And for those out there and those watching on G10, I uh, just want to put a plug in. November 7th, Saturday. Uh, we're going to have the parade out here at the, uh, on Western Boulevard starting at 10 a.m. from Coastal Carolina uh, Community College. It'll roll down Western Boulevard the same way it's always been. Uh, our parade chairperson is, is accepting uh, applications until the 23rd, which is this coming Friday. If you'd like to receive a re uh, an application, uh, please contact her, uh, or you can visit our uh, Rolling Thunder NC5 website, but her number is 910-389-4566, so you can call her as well. But uh, please come out. The parade is free to enter. It doesn't cost anything. What we would really like to see is a lot of participants and a lot of the public 
lined up on the, on both sides of Western Boulevard as this play, parade rolls down the the, uh, the road, and uh, the mayor will be leading. Uh, he'll be up front in, a, in the parade again, as, as he always is. So, uh, come on out and support it. Support our veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I know everybody loves the parade, so let's come out and support our veterans on, on uh, the parade. Uh, it's, always a, it's always a great event. There's a lot of uh, participants in the parade, so let's, uh, let's, let's, let's crowd the street that day. Linda, you're going to get a lot of phone calls, hopefully. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. The next proclamation, we're going to, we're going to uh, do a, a little something for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I'd like to invite Jackie Mitchell from the Oslo Women's Health Fund. Jackie, do you have somebody else with you here tonight? Okay, just, just you, huh? Well, that's a plenty. Thank you. We're very proud to be able to uh, give this proclamation tonight. And if you allow me, I will read it aloud. Whereas breast cancer, one of the most common cancers among American women, affects roughly 230,000 women as well as 2,300 men each year and is responsible for more than 40,000 deaths annu annually in the United States. And whereas October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which offers us an opportunity to raise awareness of this disease and its symptoms so we can more easily identify it and more effectively treat it. And whereas we must arm ourselves with the best knowledge, tools, and resources available to fight this devastating disease. And whereas regular screenings and quality care are vital to improving outcomes for millions of people. Together we must ensure all people can enjoy the extraordinary gift that is a long, happy, and healthy life. During National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, let us remember those cancer, uh, those cancer uh, folks that were taken by cancer way too soon and in tribute to them, their families, and our medical professionals. Let us recommit to, to the promise of finding a cure. And whereas, Death rates from breast cancer have been declining, and this change is believed to be the result of earlier detection and improved treatment. Now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim October 2015 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Jacksonville, and I encourage citizens, government agencies, private businesses, nonprofit organizations, and all other interested groups to join in activities that will increase awareness of this serious health concern. And I want to thank you for coming tonight, and thank you for all that you do to make people aware of this serious disease. Would you like to say something? It's just one. Okay. On behalf of the Onslow Women's Health Fund, I would like to thank all of you that you allowed us to be represented tonight for the Breast Cancer Awareness Program. We evolved about eight years ago, and we help women here in Onslow County that are underprivileged and underinsured to have care that they need required by physicians, whether it be for breast cancer or any other medical care. We receive our funding through United Way, and we also have an annual bunco tournament called Go Green for the Girls in March. So please come out, support, us and have a good time. And thanks again for re recognizing us on this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> next, for the next presentation, I'd like to ask uh, Chief Mike Inero, Captain Ashley Weaver, Sergeant Phil Philip Williams, and Officer Vanessa Smith, and Nick. <clears throat> Broninger, uh, Recreation and Citywide Services Supervisor. If they'll join me up front here. Susan Baptist. Susan Baptist is also here. 
Um, also, I have some, uh, some uh, representatives from the Special Olympics that are here also. I know Elisa Tello. Tello. Hey, I, once I get fancy, I mispronounced it, right? I'm sorry. Uh, and, and Ryan Baker. Ryan's not here. Okay, but any of your other folks that would come up with you, please. I know you like to do knuckles. There you go. <laughs> How you doing? Good, thank you. Good. Uh, Running with the Law was a five-kilometer race held on August 1st as a partner component of the National Night Out activities. This is the third year for this popular event coordinated by members of the JPD or Jacksonville Police Department Traffic Division and Recreation and Parks to benefit North Carolina Special Olympics. Over 150 runners participated in the race this time, which has, been, uh, has become a national tra tradition or, or an annual tradition here with the National Night Out. We have a check in the amount of a lot. <laughs> we have a check here. Thank you, Chief. Uh, <laughs> you're going to enjoy this, okay? All right. We have a check here in the amount of $3,445 uh, made out to the Special Olympics of North Carolina. And I'd like to present you with this check at this time. Thank you. Thank you. And I especially want to thank all these folks over here who work so hard to make that possible for these folks here. You know? Would you like to say a word or two? Okay, you good? Okay. I'm good. Okay. All right, you're good. But anyway, thank you very much. Uh, thank you much, team, for what you do out there as far as uh, making this a, a reality here because, you know, to, to see, to see the, uh, the, the faces here and see what this means to them, you know, it really is, is quite a contribution that you make. And thank you very much. That was very nice there. That's, that's. Oh, okay. We have, now we have a nice presentation here. This is for some bicycle helmets for a safety initiative project with Onslow Memorial Hospital. And I want to ask Dr. Timothy Pitzelis, uh, not, here. not here tonight. Um, he's a, a trauma surgeon out there at the hospital. Also Trish Kramer, who's an RN. Trish, Amy Sousa, the Vice President of Public Relations. And uh, I would also like to ask Chief Yanero back up again, along with Sergeant Denise Peters. What you got there? Okay. So uh, we're excited to have this opportunity to present uh, these bicycle helmets on behalf of Onza Memorial Trauma Program um, to the Jacksonville Police Department. Uh, uh, one of the purposes of our trauma program is to provide excellence in trauma care and prevent uh, injuries. One of them is the Bailey Bonkers, which is to prevent head injuries. Okay, so we have some helmets that we'd like to present to the police department that they're going to be giving out to members of our community that can't afford or don't have access to helmets. Um, how many helmets there? Right now there's a hundred. But we're hoping to get more in the future. We do uh, things with uh, the Coles Care Initiative and some other outreach programs that have helped us to help fund getting these helmets for you. Um, and hopefully when you're driving around and you see a child in need that you're going to be able to reach in the trunk of your vehicle and give them to them. And if the goal of our program is if we can prevent one head injury, one traumatic brain injury, then we've met our goal. So thank you. Thank you very much.
future to have a lot more programs like this, the community outreach that we can educate everyone and have presentations like this. So. Thank you. That's really great. I, I appreciate that. I, I know a lot of people really do, you know, especially people that have children that, you know, can't afford to go and buy one like that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's very nice of you to, you, you all to step forward and do that in the community. Next, I have some folks here that I want to recognize, and I'm going to ask Carmela George, Carmela is here, uh, to join me up front, and uh, we're going we're gonna to graduate some people. <laughs> we're going to recognize them for their, for their um, studying here, and I'm going to hand these to you, and uh, if you, uh, what this is, folks, is something I'm hoping will catch on even more than what it has. This is what, how many years have we done this now? Um, four. four. This is the fourth year that we've done this, and this is our, this is our Citizen Academy. Uh, this will be our, our fourth class that has gone through. This is the graduating class of 2015 that we're going to honor here tonight. The Jacksonville Citizen Academy is designed to offer city residents who are interested in becoming more involved in local government and its activities an opportunity to learn a little bit about what, what goes on up here, not just in City Hall, but what happens all in throughout the city as far as being, the city being able to deliver uh, the services that we deliver to the citizens, citizenry. Um, I know that our, uh, that they spent like two hours weekly for five weeks, and they covered all these things from the uh, general government here in the city, uh, some of the different departments they went through. They got a little bit of a dose of the budget, which we get a, a dose of it every year too. But um, also, uh, you know, and, and understanding the role of elected officials. Plus they looked at the uh, public services, uh, department, the recreation and parks, the police and fire department, the public safety, what we call the public safety department now, and the development, development services in the transit, city's transit system. So you get a good feel, get a good look at what's going on within your city. And tonight these certificates are being presented to those folks that actually made it through that tough curriculum there. It's not a tough curriculum, but it's it's a, hopefully it's uh, hopefully the folks that went through it got a lot out of it, got a lot of good information out of it. So I'm going to ask them to all come up. I'm going to call your name, and you can come up and get your certificate if you're here. If you're not here, you can't come get it. <laughs> It'll be mailed to you. Craig Belly, Belli Belial. Did I get it right, Craig? Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> Edward Blizzard. Mike Claiborne. Mike was here, right? There. there he Sergio Garcia. Richard Halton. Christian Jones. Awful young, aren't you? <laughs> Christopher did this as his part of his senior project. And which school do you go to? <laughs> Jacksonville High School. Yeah. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> Paula Jones. <laughs> Bobby McLean. Tony Ross. <laughs> oh, 
And I have several folks that aren't, weren't able to be with us tonight, but I'm going to read them off anyway. We have Michael Beagle. <laughs> Samantha Bredal. <laughs> Joyce Field. <laughs> Bernard Lane. <laughs> Angela Rodier. Autumn Bishop and David Marshburn. Let's give these folks another round of applause for having it completed. Thank you very much. Second, I know some of you came just solely for the uh, presentations. I'm going to take a little pause here because we got a couple items in here that may take a little bit of time up. So I will give you an opportunity to leave. Uh, you're welcome to stay, but. Um... <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs>
think he's got us turned back on again. I'll ask a question later. Yeah. All right, we'll be back in session now, and that's going to bring us to our first session of public comment for the evening. I have no one that has signed the official sign-up sheet, but uh, I know sometimes we uh, pick it up a little a uh, bit before the meeting starts, and if anyone came in that wishes to speak, if you'd indicate by raising your hand. Okay, I don't see anyone. So we're going to move on along here, and we're going to adopt our consent items. We're going to try to adopt the consent items in the minutes from a September 22, uh, 2015 special workshop meeting and a two, uh, September 22, 2015 regular meeting. With that, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. And that brings us to our um, to a public hearing, which would be under item number six in the agenda. And this is a rezoning from residential single family to corridor commercial at 2453 Piney Green Road. And uh, I guess Ryan's going to uh, present this item. Yes, sir, Mayor. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Item six before you this evening is a rezoning request submitted by Alonzo Brimmer and Jason Hill for a .54 acre tract located on Piney Green Road. That's uh, physical address 2453 Piney Green Road. On the screen before you tonight, the vicinity map shows NC 24 or Highway 24 to the south. Um, so it's shortly, you know, a couple miles up Piney Green Road from Highway 24. An aerial photograph shows that this area is uh, surrounded by properties that are either undeveloped, uh, church, single family dwellings. Across the street, you have some mobile homes and some other undeveloped property. Uh, there's currently a building that was built in the 90s located on this site. It was originally uh, slated to be occupied as a church, N never quite got open, or so it appears. Uh, across Piney Green Road, uh, you can see the residential mobile home across the street. Looking towards uh, NC24, you can see there's some single family dwelling on the opposite side of Piney Green Road, some vacant property immediately adjacent to the property. Looking towards White Oak High School or Highway 17 to the north. Um, the future land use plan for the Piney Green Road corridor in this area identifies this as a mixed use type development. So the applicants request to rezone it from the green zone or the RSF 20 zone to corridor commercial does meet the long range plans as identified in the Camel land use plan. Uh, the planning advisory board met last week and they recommended unanimously along with staff that the rezoning be approved based on findings of facts A through G being found A through J being found in the affirmative and that the rezoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities and makes it consistent with the future land use map. Ms. Lori Morris is here with Park and Associates. Should you have any questions of either staff or the applicant's representative, we have to answer any questions at this time. Council, any questions of uh, Mr. King? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Council. This time I'm going to conduct a public hearing in this matter, and I'm going to recess the regular council meeting and open the public uh, hearing. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this matter? So please indicate by raising your hand. I see no one, so I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, Council, you're being asked to approve the uh, uh, request here. Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the zoning request based on findings of fact A through J being found in the affirmative that the rezoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities and it makes it consistent with our future uh, land use map. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. That brings us to agenda item number seven, and this is a uh, honestly community outreach request for funding. And uh, Lily Gray, our community uh, development administrator, will be presenting this item. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Back in January of this year, 
City Council agreed to provide $250,000 in community development block grant funding to Oslo Community Outreach to assist in the acquisition and relocation of their existing homeless shelter to the former Piggly Wiggly building. Since that time, the special use permit that you approved has been a subject of litigation, which has delayed their ability to proceed with that project. As a result, they have um, released the $250,000 commitment that you made, and are we are before you tonight asking that a portion of those funds be used to continue with, I apologize, I missed the part. They have proceeded to actually acquire the building, even though they know at this time it cannot be used for a homeless shelter. They are before you tonight asking for $150,000 of the $250,000 that's been returned to help with the installation of the sprinkler system and needed repairs to the facility so that it can be used for the soup kitchen, Christmas cheer, and other neighborhood-related activities. So that is our request before you tonight, if you have any questions. Is that the only condition there, was that it not be used as a homeless shelter? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Is that the only condition? That is the condition now as a result of the lawsuit. It cannot be used as a homeless shelter. That is yet to be decided. Okay. But all the other uses are, are valid eligible. and yes. fit that zoning. Okay. Council, any questions of Ms. Gray? Uh, I just want to ask one question. We, um, we were using funds left over from a program called CREATE. Yes. Is that the identical funds we're using yes, for this? Yes, the same source of funding has been, that funding has been replaced into the CDBG account and is now available for eligible CDBG activities. Oh, great. Yes. Okay. Is there uh, <clears throat> no questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is Dr. Herring going to make any presentation? Uh, I think he's probably ready if he if need be. Dr. Herring, would you like to uh, speak? Uh, Mr. Mayor, elected officials of council, Don Herring, uh, 505 Waters Edge Drive, Stella, North Carolina. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity that the city council has afforded Onslow also community outreach and the initial offering or the allowing of the community development block grant resources to be assembled for the initial purchase of that property uh, to help us toward the homeless shelter. Uh, we do recognize that we're in a kind of an opportunity of a due process process right now of an adjacent property owner who has this tied up in litigation here. Uh, we've, had to, we've had to weigh this, the, um, the due process rights of an adjacent property owner versus the opportunity to acquire a building. Uh, as many of you are quite well aware, and we've had uh, feedback from other uh, land use people and realtors here, the uh, availability of quality sites of this size uh, are limited in Jacksonville. And we've looked at several and walked through several there. And so we as an outreach, had, our organization had to weigh whether we were going to allow the due process timing of that to keep us from making this opportunity of this purchase here. Uh, we've worked uh, based on our performance and all. We were able to secure uh, sufficient funds to actually purchase this building. We are the owners of that. Uh, we are working to that process. We would like, we recognize we're going to have to reorganize our, our five-year plan. Our five-year plan, based on initial application for the community development block grant funds, were to prioritize the shelter and then come back in and subsequently put uh, the administration uh, and the food, soup kitchen, those types of items there. Uh, recognizing the, having to reorganize that, we're looking the the flexibility of that building, the, the sprinkler system, which we have that, and that's our next priority upon purchasing of that, is prioritizing resources to install that sprinkler system, which would give the significant flexibility of that building to allow uh, individuals to be in there and be present. Uh, we've been very fortunate to be able to operate under some temporary uh, COs when we've done Christmas cheer in the past, but we recognize since that building has been out of commission for a while, although it's in excellent quality, a sprinkler system is critical. And we, we want to make that a priority, and uh, we'd appreciate consideration of City Council tonight to see if you could share with us in that priority, because that not opens up just to the outreach and to Christmas cheer, but to other organizations and all who we would like to use that flex center as this transition comes into play here. It would also significantly lower building and construction costs there once the full building is, is under sprinkler system. I'd be glad to take any questions at this time. So, yes, Mr. Willingham. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Herring, and the outreach for everything that you do. 
my vote in favor of the original project was specifically to relocate the homeless shelter and um, you all made a commitment to, pro to, to provide day activities and accommodations. Yes, sir. Um, and I supported using the community development money for that purpose. This is a uh, different purpose. And I understand the um, situation that you're in, the, um, the legal issues and everything. And I know that, but for that, I kind of felt that you all were proceeding along the path that you had, the vision that you had described to us earlier. Uh, barring the lawsuit, I understand that if the lawsuit uh, turns unfavorably, you won't be able to do what you indicated. But, but for that, um, assuming that you prevail uh, with the lawsuit, does your intention remain to relocate the homeless facility? Yes, sir. Our, our intention is the size and access of, this, of the building at 1210 Harker Street, uh, in, in keeping also with what planning, what we have committed to with the planning and also committed to twice in front of the board here, of the five, no, not to exceed 5,000 square feet inside that 27,000 square foot facility to provide access for day shelter and night shelter uh, resources there. Our commitment is to get all of our, all of our items from 600, 600 Court Street to 1210 Hargett Street. And um, barring the outcome and uh, should the litigation not be favorable, we're going to come back again and request, uh, we're going to go back through the process again, uh, recognizing that we continue to strengthen our case for why we should be there. Uh, and, we will, and by then we'll also have shown by our efforts, not by our words, uh, that we are a good neighbor, the improvements we've made to the building, the quality of things that we're offering there. So we, we will just be back to, um, but we're hoping the through due process of the court system that, that we'll prevail there too, but we stand prepared to, to continue to go forward. But our intent is to move everything from 600 Court Street to 1210 Hargett Street. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for Dr. Herring? Thank you, Don. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Lily, I got a question for you. All right, so we're going to use uh, $150,000 to install a required uh, sprinkler system in the building over there. It was formerly it was the uh, Piggly Wiggly over there in New River. That, that was, um, it was a total of $250,000 in that. My question is, are we still under some um, obligation with the granting agency as, as the as to the uh, disposition of the re remaining funds as to what that can be used for? Yes, sir. We're still required to spend down our CDBG allocation by May, sec May 2nd of 2016. So this project moving forward would have to facilitate us meeting our uh, compliance. Mayor, that's one, of, for the mayor and council, that's one of the reasons why the, uh, the staff is supporting only $150,000. The, we believe that the engineering work to design the sprinkler system and the installation of the sprinkler system can all occur prior to May the 2nd. There are also incidental funds. For example, let's say that the sprinkler system bid comes in at $120,000. The motion that we're recommending to you gives the Onzo Community Outreach the opportunity to do other improvements in the building. So, for example, if they can do some demolition during that time. But the key is this money, if you approve it, has to be totally spent by May the 2nd. We have taken other staff actions so that we will not lose community development block grant money. In the workshop tonight, you talked about a splash pad. Part of the money that we're required to spend and want to spend for the betterment of the low and moderate income community in, will result in the development of the splash pad. So we are currently on track so that we will not lose that federal money. And that was my other curiosity there. Was there additional funds, say like that additional $100,000, if something came up that could benefit, you know, because we, we really pledged $250,000 in this project. Would there be other opportunities for us to use that remaining $100,000 to assist them 
in, in other parts of that uh, you know, that building, you know, bring it up to, to, to uh, code or speed or whatever? There, there is the possibility so and that anything that above would 150 available. would have to come back to you. Right, okay. All right, that's, that's the only questions I have. Thank you. Um, any other input from council? Uh, with that said, uh, what we're looking for here is a standby technology. Going to sleep here. Any motion? The FY 14 15 annual action plan. Right, so we need to amend the action plan. Appropriate. So, right, so I would entertain a motion to, to do that. Uh, Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion to authorize community development staff to amend the FY 14 15 action plan and reappropriate the funds for this purpose. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. All right, so that brings us to, um, I don't think anybody's come or gone, so we're not going to go through the public comment thing again. Um, but we will go uh, to the reports. That's a, that's a concern. Um, so we'll go to the reports, and I'm going to start with, uh, Mr. Warden, are you prepared to start? Yes, sir, I am. Mayor, just proud to be here, and thank you. No report. And we're proud to have you here, sir. Easy. Mr. T <laughs> no report. <laughs> um, just congratulations to all of our city employees that was recognized today for their longevity. Thank you for your commitment and your services that you give to the city of Jacksonville each and every day. Thank you. Mr. Willingham. I should have said that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Earlier in our workshop, we recognized Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Michael Lazar for um, being um, uh, gaining the position of second um, vice chair for the North Carolina League of Municipalities, and um, that is just a tremendous accomplishment. Yes. That is is huge because that puts him on the stage to succeed to the leadership position of all of the municipalities in the city of Jacksonville. And it's just very good that uh, we have a representative from the city of Jacksonville who's doing that. I uh, checked with my historian to the left, and he's informed <laughs> me that um, former Mayor Bruce Tichy was the uh, last person, uh, well, the only person that we have from the city of Jacksonville <clears throat> to be the president of the North Carolina League of uh, Municipalities. Is that correct? That's, that's my belief. Okay. Um, so, um, and I, I do recall um, um, former Mayor George Jones' participation uh, with the Board of Directors and possibly an officer position. But um, th that's a big thing because that um, organization um, leads with um, uh, securing um, the approval of resolutions and um, um, getting what we need from the state legislature. And um, it's good to see that participation on the state level, and it's good to see Angie participating with the National League of Cities. So um, that's just a part of, of what we do that can... Um, bring back rewards in the form of legislation from the state level and the national level. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Bittner. Nothing further. Mr. Bittner. I too want to offer my congratulations to Mayor Pro Tem and Lazara on this honor. It never ceases to amaze me the influence pizza has. <laughs> <laughs> Not to Bring mention it. very very good abilities and interest in government, and I really sincerely congratulate you. No other report for this evening. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Lazaro. Thank you, Mayor. Pizza is comforting food. <laughs> uh, nothing, uh, nothing, Mayor, other than thank you for, the, for your uh, vote of confidence, and as you all know, I will do my best to represent not only the city of Jacksonville, um, its citizens and all the municipalities in which we represent, which I believe is currently 540. And um, we will do our best. So thank you. 
and my congratulations also. It's, a, it's an honor to have a member of this board to serve in that capacity. And uh, I hope you'll just remember us all down here whenever yeah. you are the bad yeah. <laughs> you know? But again, uh, I thank you. I, I want to especially thank you for all the stuff thank that you. you do. I mean, you're, I wish I had a third of your energy to be able to pull off some of the stuff you do, but he, he's very active. What, very was, active. Your, uh, what was your campaign? Uh, uh, Stromboli in every pot mm -hmm. or something? Mm -hmm. Or pizza in every pot? Pizza works. <laughs> maybe maybe he can bring the conference to, to, right. to, to, to Jack. We got it. How many years ago was that, Randy? The, the only thing 40. I have to report here is I just want to bring to everybody's attention that there is an election coming up, a municipal election. I encourage everyone that's listening to this to go out and vote November uh, Tuesday, November 3rd. I think early voting is open right now and uh, opens this coming Thursday. Uh, so exercise your right to vote, and uh, cool. I encourage you to, you know, to whether it be local, state, or national, that you get involved in in selecting your leadership. Yep. And with that, I will turn to you, Dr. Woodruff, for your report. Mayor Council, just a couple of quick things. Uh, most of you uh, attended uh, a home hardware store this weekend and bought your wife a new leaf rake, and we appreciate that. However, we hope that while you were there, you also bought brown paper bags. Mm -hmm. I want to remind everybody, leaves need to be deposited in a brown paper bag, not the plastic bags that you dispose of your garbage in. So please, as your wife rakes, supervise her appropriately and get those leaves in the brown paper bag. Secondly, I would remind everyone this coming, uh, coming Friday at 10.30, is the Beirut Memorial Observance at the Memorial Gardens downtown. We would hope that people would come out for that. Also, Mayor and members of council, I'm pleased to announce that, uh, that your local youth council group uh, has been working and they won top honors as the best site, I'm assuming that's like a website, among other youth giving programs at a statewide gathering which occurred in Charlotte just recently on October 17th. As you know, Harmony was created as a program associated with the Jacksonville Youth Council and stands for helping all reach more options through new youth givers, or Harmony. And the purpose of that is to, to, to teach them philanthropic philanthropic attitudes and to reinvest money. This year, the money for these donations came from a donation from the Eford Family Foundation and also from the city, uh, provided in part through the Caring Communities Foundation, an affiliate of the North Carolina Community Foundation. So congratulations to our young folks who were involved in that activity. As always, Mayor and Council, thank you for your leadership. It's an honor to serve with you. Thank you very much, Dr. Woodruff. With that, uh, unless, oh, I'm sorry, John. I'm so used to you not giving us a report. I just run on by you. All right. With that said, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting at this time. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. <laughs> <laughs>